Hello everybody and welcome. In this video we are going to be learning how to set up and use the iJewel design platform. Quick little edit in here for those watching on my YouTube channel. I am being paid to create this video so I just want to be fully transparent with all my subscribers. I am being paid to make this but rest assured all the opinions in this video are my own and my excitement is not being faked. This is really something it's really crazy to be able to live render and and have access to what this offers it is particularly cool uh so enough about that disclaimer let's jump in back to the video to begin though let's talk about what is this design platform and what can you do with it well i have access to this artist page right here and to kind of briefly go over it quickly, you basically have the ability to upload any of your own custom jewelry assets, load them in quickly, light and texture them as well as adjust the background and overall setting for the ring and literally share that with clients. And then to really take this to another level, this is all done in live rendering. And this includes what your clients are able to do. So they're able to scrub through select any of these pieces of jewelry you have uploaded here and then preview it and decide if your work is something that they would like to have at their company and this is just a really great way to get your work out there and try to engage with potential clients and hopefully get hired and what's incredible is you can left click to pan around left and right uh, right click to pan like this zoom in and out with the middle mouse button with the scroll wheel uh, just really really cool the glints and sparkles that you can get from these gems here and their the reflections of the metal just all happening live it's just really really nice and just beautiful but enough talking about what your clients gonna see let's go ahead and talk about your experience and what's gonna be like for you to set up and use this to begin you're gonna want to create an account if you don't have that already go ahead and click on try for free and then once you have your account made up, you're going to navigate to the My Profile section. Once this loads in, you're going to notice it is just a completely blank page for you. Now for me, I have some jewelry I already loaded in here, but for you, it's going to be completely empty. And that's why you're going to want to head up here to the Upload button, select that, and then drag and drop any of the uh, jewelry models you have. You can do OBJ, FBX, STL, or for me, I'm using a .glb file. You can give it a title. I'm just going to do Test because I'm boring and we're going to give it a description is this is a test and once you have that named you can click upload it's going to take just a moment and it'll upload that um, ring design right there and instantly load you into the editor now by default things are going to look a little boring and that's because we don't have anything set up yet so just to go over our controls real quick to make sure you know what you're doing is a left click to pan and spin the table around right click to kind of pan the cam around and scroll forward and back with the mouse wheel to zoom in and back out. Now what's super cool is we can go ahead and actually select any part of our ring and start changing those aspects of it. This might look a little daunting, but don't feel afraid. The only area you really need to look at is the side over here on the right. And you'll notice as I start clicking things like this, stuff starts to change. By default, if I click off here and into an empty area, we have access to four different zones. Studio Metal, Studio Gem, Background, and Ground. But if I were to select something, we get two more sections available to us. These are the actual materials, either the metal material or the gem material. For example, I have the main diamond section selected here, so I can go to gem, scrub through any of the massive library of gem options here, not just diamonds, tons of other things, everything from emeralds to rubies, you name it, it's all in here, and it's only going to grow as time goes on. I'm going to just do something simple and do a diamond white one, and you can see that instantly has turned it into a diamond. I'm going to go ahead to the next set of diamonds we got, go to gem again, and make something like a blue diamond. And then the next set of gems over here, go to gem, and then also make that a diamond as well. Now, the reason these are grouped up is because in my software, I gave each one a separate material. This set of diamonds had their own material. These sets of diamonds had their own material, and the center diamond had its own material. That's how the system knows to keep all these in a group. That's how it knows when I select the side diamonds and set them to be blue, all these band diamonds are blue, or I can make them all pink so it's important to make sure that you do texture these correctly give them their own unique material before exporting and uh, that way when you load it in it's gonna be much easier you don't have to select each diamond one by one keeps it much easier 
What's also cool is we can select the metal of the ring. Again, both of these, the band and the prongs at the top are all linked to one material. So it doesn't matter which one I select. As soon as I change the metal material, since we are default under metal mode, we can start changing the color of that or changing the metal properties of it. For me, I'm going to go with something like a rose gold. That seems pretty nice right there. But again, if I would have given this top prong a separate material from the band, I could have two different colors. We could have one color for the prong and another color for the ring. Uh, and we could break it down and each individual prong could be a different color if you wanted to. Uh, but for me in this case, I just wanted to keep it simple in all one color. So we're just going to go ahead and leave that as rose gold. And now that we have everything textured as we want, let's go ahead and talk about lighting. That is all going to be underneath Studio Metal. You'll notice as I've deselected the ring, we can, we have our metal and gem, but deselect. We're only going to be seeing these options, and I'm going to be selecting Studio Metal. And these little spheres here just give me presets of HDRIs that I can quickly click through and change the lighting environment for my ring to get something that looks nice. It's particularly important to know that the lighting that we're changing is only for the metal. That's why it's called Called studio metal the metal is the only thing that's getting changed and I think for this one we'll do maybe metal one metal three seems oh yeah metal three I like that we'll do metal three now the gems could use some love so next we're gonna go over is studio gem and like the name implies we're only going to be changing the lighting for the actual gems. The metal is not going to be affected. So we can go ahead and start selecting some options here and instantly that is much nicer. And that's because by default what it's been running at is none. That's why it doesn't look very pretty right now. But if we go back to gem one, we have gen two, gem three, or gem four. I like gem four. That's very nice. I like that flashy color there. Let's go ahead and keep that right there. And at this point, we have the lighting for our gem adjusted. We have the lighting for our metal adjusted. Let's go ahead and finish up by getting a background set up and then finish up with the lighting on our floor. So if I have background selected, we can have some of these preset background colors we can select from. But you may notice we have like this floor going on here. And uh, this could be what you want, but for me, I really don't like that. So what we're actually gonna do is switch over to ground, and then we're gonna go through and get a bunch of presets of ground options we can use. If we start at the top, you can see we get kind of like this reflection shadow combo that blends in with the background very nicely. But for me personally, I found if we go through, we get like a rough, nice, shadowy background, something. So, oh yeah, I think that might be the one. Yeah, or we could just do like a downward shadow and reflection, but I like this one right here. There you go. So <laughs> you can see this ring may not have the best design choices. The pink and blue are contrasting pretty hard uh, along with the white centerpiece, but um, yeah, feel free to be creative and adjust this. But now that we've got our ground set correctly, let's pop back to background and go ahead and change a few of these options. Yeah, we have the nice light gray. Uh, and again, make sure to check back uh, frequently for different um, options here, because I'm sure with time, uh, you're going to get more options in the studio gem. The metal area is going to grow as well as your ground and shadow options and background options. This is constantly going to be growing and building. Uh, but <laughs> this is looking very something. It's looking like something. Um, but uh, this this could be it. We got our we got our elements set. So then finally we have our section over here on the left side. We can actually give this a name. This is what we originally set up when we brought it in. But we could um, we could change it. Uh, we're just going to leave it as test now. And uh, you'll notice, though, this little preview picture is looking kind of bland. It's not looking as near as colorful as what we have here. So that's where we can click Snapshot and Save View. And once we click this, our view here is going to be saved. And that's what the clients are going to see as they're scrubbing through our portfolio. Now, it's very important to remember and to know this. Clicking Snapshot in Save View does not save the work we did here. To do that, we need to click Save. As soon as I click Save, project's been saved. Now this is officially saved. And in fact, we can click Save and Preview, and it's gonna go ahead and open up a new tab. And once this loads up, this will be letting us see the preview of what a client would see if they were coming through here. And they'd have access to the, this full page with a little description down here and the ability to pan around and 
see what the jewelry looks like. Now, I know this is not the most properly artistically designed element here. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's go ahead and click on my profile up here to hop back to the beginning of this uh, our little home page here. It's going to load in. You can see we now have test. It's loaded in and right available. Of course, we can click on this and us, since we're logged into this page and this is our page, we have the ability to pan around like any client would, except we can also click save view here and say, well, maybe I'd like things to be a little bit more different. So quickly for that, you can also click delete and you can also click edit. So you can quickly jump back into that editor. Of course, you also have the options to instantly share by clicking the share button. And you also have the ability to click the little X up here to close this out. So you can get back to your main page here as well. And that basically is it. It's that simple to start building a massive portfolio piece to adjust it, set it up, and instantly start getting different pictures and stuff uh, for your clients to see. Like it's really incredible how quickly you can just instantly start loading this up and designing and finishing up your pieces for clients to look at and see just that quickly and easily. And of course, I've been kind of showing this here. So let's go ahead and click on this. Let's see the full thing. We have this right here and we're going to go ahead and hop into edit. And then what we're going to do is click um, save and preview. And that's going to load in the full big page uh, just so we can kind of enjoy kind of this this little here. This was uh, a nice little piece that I kind of built. This is kind of just like a little example. I named it Clover. Uh, it's a teal base that delicately holds a bouquet of clover green. I gave it kind of like a nice name. Just just some ideas of what you could do to kind of describe your your uh, your product and make it more attractive for, to potential clients and stuff. Uh, and this was kind of like a, a like a Irish clover idea I was going for. We have like the golden band with like the nice teal green on the outside with like a darker green here and then the teal center diamond. We have some nice shadows and lighting going on. If we go back over to the editor here. Here's some of the settings I used for my studio. I used metal eight for the metal there. Uh, for the gem, I used gem four. For the background, I used green. And for the ground, I used this one right here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's at the very bottom. Once you scroll to the very top, it's that bottom one right there. And then of course, if I select my main diamond, I use a sapphire green. For my side diamonds, also sapphire green. And then for this little kind of bouquet here, I used, if I scrub up or down, it's in this list here, I used this zircon green, very cool. And then for the metal, I kept it super basic and just did this gold yellow 750 color. So th it's uh, that's basically it for this video. It's uh, extremely crazy to see what you can build and come up with yourself here. And uh, I encourage you to try it out, play around and get creative. It's just amazing how much more frictionless and smooth it feels to just have a live render and just start instantly clicking around and just changing things and um, basically just being creative. It makes it, uh, to be honest, a lot more fun than the tedious process of having to wait for things to load up and all that. Um, but thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful and uh, I will see you all in the next video.